Wondering how to get started with training a psychiatric service dog? Don't worry, in this video, I'm gonna go over exactly what your training options are, as well as what you'll need to do to train your psychiatric service dog, so stay tuned. For the best dog training and product advice, be sure to hit subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified every time I post a new video. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa, I am a certified professional dog trainer, and I've helped hundreds and hundreds of pups and their parents live more peaceful lives together. All right, so before we get into exactly Exactly what you'll need to train your service dog to do. It's important for you to think about exactly how a psychiatric service dog will help make your everyday life better. This is because one of the very first steps is getting a doctor's note. The Department of Transportation, as well as many service dog training organizations and individual service dog trainers will usually ask for a doctor's note. So it's best to already have one available. When you see your doctor, you'll want to outline exactly how a psychiatric service dog is going to help you. If you're not exactly sure how a psychiatric service dog can help with your disability, then don't worry, I'm gonna talk about it when I talk about more specific disability tasks. Okay, so first let's talk about your options because there are many options when it comes to training your psychiatric service dog. So there's the option of self-training, which is completely doing 100% everything on your own with the support of maybe some research online. The second option is adopting a already trained service dog from an organization. The third is hiring a private service dog trainer. And the fourth is working with a group or an organization that either holds group service dog training classes or does a combination of online education and group or private support. So let's talk about the pros and cons of each. So the first is self-training. The obvious pro is that this is completely free. You don't have any financial commitment. As far as the training goes, obviously you're still committed to anything your dog needs, but you're not paying anything for training. But the con comes with the fact that you're gonna be spending a lot of time researching and maybe not even doing as good of a job as you should be. There's a lot that comes with training a service dog, including really understanding the laws around having a service dog. So it's not just about just really being able to train your dog or whatnot, but you really do wanna be familiar with the laws so that when you do go out in public with your psychiatric service dog, you feel confident when inevitably you come across some roadblock. And unfortunately, that's just a reality of our society. A lot of people don't understand hidden disabilities and may ask you questions. And it can even come from a store manager or a small business owner who's not familiar with your federal rights and the ADA. One of the things to consider too when you have a psychiatric service dog is that automatically you're gonna have more attention on you than just the general public. People are gonna have questions, point at your dog, think that your dog is really cute, and even more inappropriately, some people will take pictures without your consent. I've had this happen with a client. Someone literally started taking a picture of us training. So like I said, one of the cons of self-training is that you might not feel as confident really standing your ground when a employee or someone says that dogs are not allowed here. Another thing to consider is state law. So a fully trained psychiatric service dog is protected by the ADA, but if your dog is in training, you still may want to practice in public spaces. Now here in Colorado, you are allowed to have your service dog in training as long as they're well behaved and they're potty trained, etc. But these laws vary from state to state, so it's really important to be familiar with the laws of your specific state. Now you can see there's a lot other than just the training to really learn about having a psychiatric service service dog, which is why self-training can take up a lot of time. So while it is no financial commitment, the biggest con is going to be the time. The second option is adopting a already trained service dog from a organization. Now, the obvious pro to this is that you don't have to do a lot of work. They're already trained by a professional trainer and they've already been vetted by that organization. The biggest con to this one is the waiting list. A lot of these organizations can have a two year wait or more, which is a really, really long time. Time. Now the third option is working with a private service dog trainer and they can actually help you pick a dog and help you all the way to passing your public access test and provide support once your dog is a fully trained psychiatric service dog. The biggest pro is that you have custom personalized support but with that comes the con which is custom
some personalized support will take up more of your trainer's time, meaning that it's gonna be a bigger financial commitment. Now, this really depends obviously on who you work with, but prices can vary and can easily cost tens of thousands of dollars over time. Now, if you have the funds for this, this is an amazing option. But if you don't, then my favorite option will be number four, which is to work with an organization that will help you self-train your service dog. So think of this almost like a hybrid where there's an online component or a group class component along with training your own dog. I love this option because number one, it's gonna be lower cost because like I said, it's a hybrid model of doing some of it yourself. And so the cost is gonna be much lower than strictly working with a private trainer. Additionally, another big pro is that you have the support of a community. So usually it's the other people that are training their service dogs along with the actual organization itself. And sometimes it's really nice to have a safe space where you can vent because it can be really, really frustrating when you're out in public and a business owner tells you that you're not allowed to be in that business or an airline gives you trouble while traveling. Another big pro is that they're going to test you out, meaning that you're going to have an unbiased person evaluate your dog and say whether they're ready to be out in public. So you will have confidence going into stores or any other public space knowing that your dog is well-trained. Now the cons of course is that you are still training your own dog so it is going to require work. It's usually a hybrid model so you're still going to have to spend some time learning but it is much easier to go through an online course where everything is outlined for you versus starting from complete scratch and trying to figure out what you even need to Google or research in the first place. Now shout out to my favorite organization which is Atlas Assistance Dogs. That's where I volunteer and they make it really really affordable for you to train your own service dog and they use a combination of online learning and the support of a facilitator which is a trainer who volunteers to help you pass that public access test. Okay, so now that we talked about the different routes you can go when it comes to training your service dog, let's talk about exactly what your service dog will need to learn. There are two categories of training when it comes to training your psychiatric service dog. So the first one is going to be the public access test, which is to ensure that your dog is ready and well behaved to be in these public spaces where dogs are normally not allowed. And the second is the actual service dog tasks that that you're going to train your dog to perform. So let's talk about exactly what you'll need to prepare your dog for for the public access test. So the main things you're going to have to train your service dog to do, and this is not a comprehensive list by any means. If you want a more comprehensive list, let me know in the comments below and I can make a whole video on that. But in general, you're going to have a temperament test, which is making sure your dog doesn't have anxiety around being touched, being grabbed, loud noises, children approaching, strangers approaching, etc. And this is because while it is disrespectful for people to randomly try to pet your service dog, unfortunately, it is a reality that many people do not understand. The last thing you want is for yourself to be liable because your dog bites a stranger or a kid because they're overwhelmed and nervous. Also, it goes without saying, basic manners are going to be really, really important. So a nice heel, sit down, stay, etc. Next is the ability to ignore distractions, like if you pass by another dog, a stroller, etc. Your dog should be able to stay focused on you. Next, the public access test will evaluate whether your dog is able to be controlled and calm entering and exiting a building. And then of course, very, very important is that your dog is 100% potty trained and not going to mark on anything. So let's get into the actual psychiatric service dog tasks that you can train your dog to do. Of course, these are going to vary by individual and where you need the most support, but these are the most common psychiatric service dog tasks. So first is deep tissue therapy, which is where you can have your dog lay down on you or even provide a chin rest for when you're experiencing major anxiety, stress, or anything that's going to trigger your disability to become worse. The second is medication reminders as well as retrieving medication 
medication. And this is helpful if you tend to forget to take your medication that you need, or if you need your dog to retrieve medication when you need. So an example of that would be if you're about to have a panic attack, you can train your dog to recognize those environmental cues and go retrieve that specific medication for you. The third one is barriers. So if you're claustrophobic or you're uncomfortable in crowded situations, you can train your dog to become a barrier and stand between you and the crowd or train your dog to do an orbit, which is where your dog walks around you in circles as you leave the building, provide you with some space. Next is the graceful exit. You can actually teach your dog to nudge you and pretend like they need to go use the restroom so you can excuse yourself from a group. So this is really useful if you don't feel like explaining your disability to a group of people and you need to leave a social situation. And you can train your dog to recognize a discrete signal to get them to perform this behavior. Last but not least is teaching your dog an interruption. You can train your dog to lick or nudge you to interrupt things like night terrors or self-harm or if you're about to experience a panic attack. If you would like a tutorial on any of these behaviors, let me know. Now, if you're just trying to focus on the basics right now, I really recommend you check out my free training on how to get your dog to focus on you even when you don't have treats. This will help you get started with training your dog to focus on you with a variety of distractions, which is really the first step of training when it comes to preparing for the public access test. All right, so that's it for today, everyone. Let me know if you found this video helpful by writing helpful in the comments below. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.